what's up everybody it is kevin of the tabletop warlords and today i would like to share with you a passion project one year in the making it was about the same time last year that i decided that i wanted to build a fort fort fever now i can only assume that everybody watching this video right now is a war gamer and they know what I'm talking about. You imagine battles being you know, fought over so many different environments, and the one thing that your imagination still comes back to is, oh my god, sweet Ford battles. Ford Fever! That vision was too hard to resist any longer, and I just, I just had to do it. So I got some insulation foam together, got out my sharp Zacto knife, and I built me a Ford. Like everything I design, I have to have modularity. I cannot stand static pieces because I like boards to be able to be fluid. I like to be able to set up a table in a different way. So there's always a different experience. So I'm gonna get a beautiful Omega Variety table set up, show you the different configurations of this fort and kind of uh, give you a more detailed look at its individual parts and do a brief explanation as to how I've created this. But before we get that far, I just want to say, if you like this video, please give it a like. And if you like the content that we're producing here, consider subscribing to the Tabletop Warlords. We would love to have you. And if you're an incredibly generous individual and to support us in the best possible way, consider joining our Patreon. And here she is in her full glory the octagonal fort that is created using every single piece in the modular fort set does have a pretty big footprint as you can see i think it is about it's like the rough area of a three by three square you can see it is a little bit thinner than it is long um but yeah it's gonna have a huge footprint on a normal six by four table Using this setup, you could definitely run some pretty epic fort battles with a defender and attacker. It would need interesting setups for the deployment zones, however, though, because as you can see, the fort does not leave much in the way of space between the outside walls. So you even might want to orient this gatehouse in uh, maybe one of the uh, side wall segments so that it was a little bit more difficult for attackers to get to. But either way, this is the fort in its full glory. By making the simple switch of having the basic wall segments uh, swap places with the tower segments, you can have long forts. It will give you a little bit more space between the edge of the table and the entrance of the fort, so maybe this will work better for some scenarios. Take away two more of the basic wall segments and you have much smaller fort. With the further removal of the tower segments, you can have tiny fort. Everybody loves tiny fort. That said, not much of a courtyard left, but it still is a fort and it looks, it, it looks cool. It still looks cool. This modular fort set can also be used to cap table edges. As you can see here, it stretches out to almost encompass the full six feet of the average gaming table. For even more variety, you can actually cap the opposite length of the table and instead do the four foot length. We have uh, three wall segments here and two towers adding up perfectly to that four foot width. And it actually allows you to have more of a behind the scenes with the fort. I just use the extra pieces from the fort to create what looks like kind of more like inner layers of the wall uh, and then, you know, put some buildings in there so it really looks like it is some kind of complex that the Gar are trying to break into. Here you can see the entirety of the fort project broken up into its constituent parts. The size of the project and the complexity of it once you see it assembled on the table really makes it look like a complicated process, but I will show you all the little details and techniques I use to make it look better and not take long at all to produce. The first thing I assembled for this project was simply a single segment of the long straight piece of our wall, just the basic building block, right? And I did this because it's really easy to think that you need to design every aspect of each individual part of a large project before you even start, but I think that's actually counterintuitive. It's almost easy just to start with the basic idea, find the most basic part, produce that, and then replicate everything you did in the further pieces and everything just kind of comes together great. As far as materials, the build was also not expensive at all. You can see from the bottom, most of these are completely consisting of insulation foam. 
Insulation foam is incredibly easy to get a hold of. Almost every home improvement store uh, out there is going to have it. And it's really not that expensive, especially if you buy in larger sheets. I think you can usually get two by two sheets for relatively cheap. But if you're going to do a project that needs this much foam and you're a war gamer in general, you might as well buy like a four by eight and it gets way cheaper as the more you buy. Other than insulation foam, which like I said, is most of the project, I did use quite a bit of what is called chipboard. It is a form of cardboard like you find in the back of the legal pad of notebook paper and you can buy it in uh, bulk in like kind of foot by foot sheets on Amazon and I assume eBay as well. It is what I use to produce all of the detail work on these pieces in the form of these like what are supposed to be metallic sheets and like the girders that support the concrete. It also is what I use to make the trim as well as the uh, the uh, long beams here on the ladder. Um, the only other materials I used were uh, wooden matchsticks, which you can get at craft stores, really inexpensive for the uh, rungs of my ladders. And then I use wooden dowels to represent these kind of like thicker metallic covered electrical cables that run from my plastic gribbles uh, all the way, or gribbles rather, um, to the trim down here. And like I said before, this was the first run in all the detail work and I basically just cloned it onto all the other pieces. So you'll look at the back of these, it's the exact same setup with the metal sheets on top. And then you can see I have ladders made in the exact same way. The framework and trim is continued throughout and it's just copied dimensions perfectly. And it just makes like, a, it makes it immediately look like it all goes together. The other more numerous pieces are these angle pieces that form the corners of the fort. Um, they were made in the exact same way as the straight pieces. You can just see that all it was was just measurement and cutting them to an angle that allowed them to line up with the other pieces. You can see that all of the detail work as well is once again just mirrored from the exact same way I did the uh, straight wall segments. Once I had the main segments of the walls complete, I obviously needed a gatehouse to, uh, or gateway rather, to get into the fort. So I used the exact same technique once again to make these caps. Uh, they're just much smaller. And then obviously for the gate, I, I basically just made a slot that the gate could be slid into on each side opposite each other. And then made a cool little gate. This is 100% chipboard. I think it's about four layers. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I just kind of cut it out and use my imagination to create what looked like a giant industrial door. Super easy. And that just slides in. So now I also wanted to be able to represent this being closed without it just disappearing. So I made this teeny tiny piece that could be slotted in representing the top of the gate once it lowers into the ground. I'm just a weirdo. Finally, to make the fort look a little bit more, you know, military grade, I absolutely wanted to give it cool towers. So I've made these like, you know, reminiscent of World War II pillbox towers. They are, you know, the, they're half the size of the wall as far as measurements. And then I basically wanted to make them appear too leveled. So you can see on the front, it has this foreboding, like kind of like window uh, slit on the front where you could imagine people are inside ready to fire at attackers. And then I have a top area. So the way that I justified this is the top area has a hatch, which you can see right there in the corner. And then I basically made it so that it has a door in the back so that uh, models uh, can kind of run to the base from the inside of the fort and uh, travel up into the pillbox. And then I also made sure to feature a backwards facing uh, window so that just in case the attackers have breached the walls, the uh, defenders inside the pillbox are be able to engage them as well. And then obviously you want to have uh, doors that go out to the walls. So it's just really easy measurement. You kind of just line them up. I made the doors with chipboard as well. And you can see they line up perfectly with the wall. So it's just something that uh, looks cool functionally and it also allows your troops to have a sensical way of getting around. As far as a paint job, it was really simple. Like I said, I literally just painted the entirety of anything that was concrete, a really light concrete gray. And then I simply, um, after obviously dinging it up real nice and adding all of the detail work, I just did two washes that were pretty thin of a medium gray and then a really dark wash of a really dark gray and actually ended up like blotting. You can kind of see as the pattern, um, I, I blotted so that this dark wouldn't be all across the board uniform and it really gave it a nice concrete effect. And the only other thing that was present on these was this rusted metal. Uh, it's once again, really simple. I painted everything that was metal, jet black, then with a sponge covered about, I would say 50% of it with a just brown, muddy brown color. 
I then took the sponge and mixed that muddy brown color with a pure orange and blotted that on about 25% of the area. And then with pure orange in a sponge, you dot about 10% of the area. Once all that was done, the gradient immediately makes it look like incredibly rusty metal. It's a little bit more evident on the gate piece here. Um, but then the last step, you wanna take that same sponge, take a gun metal, chain mail, whatever color of metallic that you would like to use for your fort and then blot that over about 75% of it. And when it's done, it creates this amazing rusty patina all over the metal. Um, and that's literally the only two painting methods I used because the plain gray color scheme of the concrete and that metallic didn't look like it meshed super well. The last thing I did was a simple uh, two-step wash. I took that pure orange that I used when making the rush, watered it down a lot and just simply put that around the area of anything metallic and it gives it this nice rusty runoff color um, that was really natural and easy to do. And then once I was done with that, I simply did the exact same thing with the same muddy brown color I used for the first step of the rust and hit up all of the edges of the model where dirt would be kicked up over a lot of time. And then uh, along anywhere where there was a ladder moving up to the walls and uh, walking along the walls. And that was able to just kind of immediately put a wash all over the entirety of the piece, unifying them, and it really added a little step of realism. I cannot stress enough how cool this looks like in person and how easy it was to execute. Rest assured you're going to be seeing this amazing modular fort in a battle report coming up soon because I cannot wait to either defend or siege these walls. That being said, it will be difficult because there are no scenarios in Beyond the Gates of Antares that involve fortifications like these. So me and Sergey had a pretty good idea. We thought, why not get some inspiration from you, the viewers who play this game just as much as we do. If you have an idea for a fourth scenario, you should send that to uh, the Tabletop Warlords at gmail.com. We would love to review your ideas. And if we find one that's really sweet, we would love to exhibit it here on the channel. I really hope you like the modular Ford build I showed you today. If so, make sure to like the video. While you're at it, if you like the content being produced by the Tabletop Warlords, make sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you get notifications for any time anything new comes out. And as always, an extra special thank you to all the men and women who form our patrons. We couldn't do it without you. Rest assured, you are going to be seeing this amazing modular fort in a battle report coming up soon because I am itching like a villain. <laughs> itching like a villain to get behind these four walls. I'm sorry. Stop <laughs> 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 itchy. Jesus. Two. Rest assured.